Hey guys, welcome to Flat Top King. Hey, today is all about a gyro. We're putting lamb in it. It's one of our favorites. We're gonna put it all on the griddle. You guys stay tuned. So this is the deal. We have been playing around with the recipe. I've been going to a local grocery store for ever since we've been doing this house. And I've noticed that they've had lamb. I've been kind of like, honestly, just hesitant to try it. Well, the other day I pulled the trigger and holy smokes, was it fantastic. I mean, my wife said, we don't know it's because it was the marinade or because the lamb itself. So then we went back to the grocery store a couple days later and bought a different type of lamb. I used the same marinade and we loved it just as more. We used the lamb chops. Then we went back and bought more lamb. Now we're on our fifth piece of, or fifth package of lamb and we cannot get enough of it. If you don't know, you should know that in our household, we eat Greek a lot. It's very easy for us to make. We always have certain ingredients on hand, your Kalamata olives, your um, uh, feta cheese, your tzatziki sauce, so on and so forth. So when we're not filming, we try to eat healthy. One of our go-to meals is a Greek steak or lamb style salad. And I'll make a marinade, grill up the proteins, throw in the vegetables and you're good to go, right? So today we're gonna to put that all on a gyro or myro or euro, but some kind of row we're gonna put it on today. Euro, gyro, however you wanna say it. However you wanna say it. I think it's euro. Let's let's make the marinade, you ready? Yes, it let's is go. fantastic. Right. Ziploc baggie is gonna be good enough. All right, first things first, one tablespoon of garlic. I use a squeezed garlic. Love it, love it, love it. Three tablespoons of olive oil. Three tablespoons of balsamic vinegar. I'm gonna add just a splash of Worcestershire sauce maybe like a half a tablespoon. Tablespoon of Dijon mustard. We have stone ground mustard. This just helps a little bit with the tanginess, a little bit of the consistency as well. All right, one of the kickers, it adds a little bit of sweetness. If you do not have this, I'm sure you could substitute honey, uh, but it just gives it an incredible flavor. And we have this on hand all the time. And I'm gonna do one tablespoon of this. All right, I'm gonna squeeze a lemon in there. A half a lemon, sorry. The marinade for this lamb is going to be on our website. If you guys haven't seen it, we have a website where we kind of like what hand select certain recipes to go on there that we think that's really good. So we'll have this one on the website as well, theflattopking.com. All right, rosemary, fresh rosemary. I think it's crucial. You don't have to have it, I guess not, but it's one of those things to where I really, really, really enjoy rosemary with this uh, recipe. I don't like to overpower rosemary, so we're just gonna cut a little bit up, see what we got. I'm sure it's gonna be about like a quarter teaspoon, maybe half teaspoon, something like that. To give you an idea, our lamb is 1.1 pounds, right? So not a lot of lamb. It's not like we're going 30 pounds of lamb. And we're using lamb sirloin. Yes, it's actually, we actually prefer the lamb sirloin over the lamb chops. It's got like a, I don't know if you, we'll open up the package and I'll show you. It's got like a fat exterior. It reminds me of, uh, what is it called? Picanha, the sirloin. Yep. Where it's got that fat cap. Oh man, it's phenomenal. All right, a little salt to taste, a little pepper. Now I'm gonna show you guys the difference in this because I know it's gotta be mentioned or said, and I feel foolish not to, really quick. Um, you guys know all of my Greek seasoning. I know it's Greek seasoning, but when you eat it, you don't get that Greek flavor out of it. I think it's just a great all-purpose seasoning. We have the list, uh, we have this listed in the description below because we use it all the time. What I have found is this is Kroger Private Label, Greek-inspired blend. This is a little bit more robust. This is where you get the herby flavor um, it, it, I think it's way different than the uh, Cavenders, right? So I'm just gonna put a little bit of this in here. It's a little bit bolder, maybe a quarter teaspoon, something like that. And that's it, that's your mix right there. Just mix it all up. You can use a, um, what's it called, one of them sealers? 
air glide sealers, whatever it's called. I don't Ziploc. Think that's it. <laughs> yeah, you do. The Ziploc things or the airtight things that suck the air out. The vacuum sealers. Show them this lamb real quick. See that fat cap right there? It is absolutely phenomenal. The land is just as tender as can be. If you can't find lamb, you could also do it with sirloin any meat. chicken. This is the same recipe that we would use for chicken, um, sirloin, uh, flank steak, you name it. I mean, the actual marinade is phenomenal. It is. We've had it. What did, would you say we had this like four times in two weeks? Yeah, once I got an idea of what to do, and once we introduced lamb, it's been hard to get off of it. So we just thought we would just share it with you guys. That's it. So we're going to refrigerate this as long as we can. I've never done it overnight. I've always done it the day when I get home. So I get home usually 10 to 12-ish. I marinate it. We have dinner between 4 and 6, somewhere through there. So same thing. Just like that, right? That's it. All right, sometimes I feel like I do, do it like a, a disclaimer. At no point did I ever say this was authentic. I said, this is how we like it. So you guys need to pick and choose. All right, so this is the deal. We buy store-bought tzatziki. There's a very specific brand, and we absolutely love this to death. Can you make your own? Absolutely. But we have Greek so often that it's just nice to go to the store, grab a tub, and not make it from scratch. Just relax, okay? You'll live. I don't make my homemade pasta. feta. I don't make homemade feta cheese either. Can you? Yes. So just relax. All right. I like this method. This is a method you can do on multiple cuisines, multiple um, nationalities. Okay. I kind of attribute it to the same ideas of the pico. Okay. So what we do, what I do, I should say, is I take chopped up tomato. I like got a little green onion. We love our pickled red onion. We have banana peppers, I have a little parsley, Kalamata olives, and our um, English cucumbers, right? Just toss a little bit of feta in there as well. Save a little bit on the side. And that is how we actually top our pitas, our salads. You just mix it all together. You can add your Greek yogurt at this point. Should we add it now? No. Okay. We're just going to top this. So when you make your pita, you just top this right on top of it. So it's like a little jardinere for the Italians, a little pico for the Mexican style. And this is kind of like a Greek pico. You think I'm crazy? No. That's how we do it. Yep. This is how. All right. Let's see. We got that out of the way. We got pita breads. Let me show this pita bread. Can you use white pita? Yes. We're not burning our carbs today. We got a lot of stuff coming down the pipeline. So this is the deal. I'm just going to easily add a little oil, a little garlic powder, my Greek seasoning, toast these up, and that's going to be our pita, our pita pockets. Can we say too, like this brand, this yeah. is a staple in our house. They actually have flatbread, flatbreads, and we actually make flatbread pizzas on them once a week, yes. whether for lunch or for dinner. That's something that she actually makes for me because it's something she can make. <laughs> So these have what, six carbs? Seven. Seven carbs, so it's perfect for us. The other one, the white ones had like 30 carbs. So that's more carbs than I want in a day. So this is perfect for us. So this is what we're doing. You guys on board? Five tops heated up. Woo, it's hot. Marinated, nothing different. We got the olive oil in there. Oh, man. Right on the flat top. Look how beautiful that looks. There's really no rhyme or reason, just a little avocado oil. You can use butter. You're just gonna soften these up. I kinda kinda think it's like a, you know, kinda like a garlic bread, right? You would spread butter on it. Your seasonings. Just trying to match and build those flavors. This is no different. 
Remember how I was saying earlier that this Greek seasoning is different than the one that we put in the uh, lamb? This is more of an all-purpose. It's got a little bit more salt to it. So that's why we're using it right now. Now look, on this lamb, we're just going to flip it back and forth. We're going to shoot for about uh, 115 degrees-ish. Let it rest. We like a little bit more on the medium rare to rare side. If you guys like it cooked more, then just cook it more. If you notice, I'm turning the lamb in a different spot because that new spot is going to be the hottest. And that allows your other side to get that crust. Man, can you smell that rosemary? Yes. Mm. That, is... that char on the outside, I'm telling you, we did it for the first time on a pellet smoker. And it's actually the second thing I ever put on there and I was just basically playing around with. At the time, I was trying to dial in the marinade. But once we got it dialed in, man, oh, geez. So this is, this is legit. This is one of our favorite meals lately. All right, guys, so we got a beautiful char. A lot of people say you can't get a crust, you can't get a char on the Pit Boss Ultimate Griddle. That's completely false. A lot of people say that you cannot get a char when you use wet marinade. We've proved that's not true. All right, here we go. Just to recap, we got our Greek-style pico ready and going. Look at that. That is phenomenal. Shredded lettuce. Our toasted pita bread. Our Greek tzatziki yogurt dip. We're a little light on feta. I love feta. So this is how we build it. The fat runs this way. I like a piece of fat in every single piece. So thinly slice it. And I like double tzatziki. So we're gonna do double tzatziki. Golly, let me just show you. Let me just show you. I mean, it's just so dang tender. Get a piece of fat in there. Mm. If you bite. <laughs> that marinade might be one of the best homemade marinades I've ever come up with. Mm. Mm. I'd love to go to a street fair or a Greek festival and watch these things come off the skewers and have them slice it fresh for you. Enough talking. Enough talking. Let's go. All that fat involved in it too. Mm. You know, I actually came up with this out of laziness. I got tired of adding each ingredient and I said, why don't we just add the ingredients together? I'm sure my lettuce to meat ratio is completely off. <laughs> There you go. All right, I'm gonna build the other two. All right, guys, there you go. Super easy. I'm telling you that marinade is on point. Uh, just to be honest with you, it's probably one of the best things that we make. Um, I have no clue how close it is traditional, but I know one thing, we absolutely love it. We eat it at least once or twice a week, no matter what configuration we come up with. It is absolutely phenomenal. Mm. Absolutely everything you want. The feta, the tzatziki, even goes as far as like the seasoning on the pita just raises the bar. Anyways, we think it's outstanding. Hope you guys try it. If you guys haven't, check out our join membership program. It's where you guys can help out the channel. Check out the Griddle Group on Facebook. It's where we get inspiration from you guys to see what you guys are making and vice versa. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, share it with your friends. Ah, tongue tied because my mouth is just going slobbing everywhere. <laughs> it's good. Peace.